have a catch and cook, baby. <laughs> oh, we are? Do you think we need to keep that bass right yeah. there? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. That's one of our good bass from our good bass pond. We want to eat them. We want to <laughs> eat from Martin's Family Homestead and today we are going to be doing a bluegill catch and cook. That's right, Houston's been wearing me out about wanting to try out his new fishing pole that he got for his birthday from one of his subscribers. So I thought we'd come over to the pond and try to catch us some big bluegill and do a little bluegill catch and cook because I don't think Houston's ever eaten a bluegill. Yeah, huh? Have you? Yeah, on the catch and cook that we did down at the creek. Oh, we did cook one little yeah. bit, kind of, sort of. So, we're over at our pond. As I said, I know we've got some big bluegill in here. If we can get them to bite, maybe, hopefully. If not, we maybe we'll catch just yeah. a little bass or something. Look you there, got your fishing pole out. Yeah. Uh, before we came over here though, we went down to the pond and uh, set out our trap. You remember the little, little fish trap that we got in the first battle box a few weeks ago? Pulled all the way through. There you go. Easy, easy. You gotta, you gotta make sure it goes in bottom side down. Is that enough? Because this is our little honey hole and we want to replenish our stock. We love to have the bluegill in here to feed our bass. So hopefully we can catch a bunch of little small bluegill, bring them back, throw them in the pond, and maybe catch a few big ones to eat. While Houston's over there trying to catch some fish on his new fishing pole, I'm gonna break out the secret weapon. I think we can get him some fish with these guys right here. Caught some crickets this morning and a couple grasshoppers, and we're gonna throw them out there under a bobber. And I think that might be the secret weapon here. Daddy, was that good? I don't know, I wasn't watching. Like this video comment down below smash the like button and and ring the foot notification bell and we'll see if we catch any fish okay sometimes things just don't go as planned had a small slight mishap at least to me it's a slight mishap to somebody else it's not real slight Why are you crying, buddy? You broke my fishing pole. <laughs> my new fishing pole. <laughs> I did. It was a total accident. So let me tell you the story. <sighs> We're just out here fishing. I got Houston's pole hung up, so I was just doing like you always do to get a little hook un unstuck. And let me show you what happened. Yeah. Look, Houston's fishing pole, his brand new fishing pole, he just got for his birthday, snapped on our first fishing trip. And the poor guy's heartbroken, which I don't blame him. It's his brand new fishing pole. I can't believe it. You did it to my brand new fishing pole. 
bow. <laughs> you know I broke your fishing pole on an accident, right? It wasn't on purpose. It was a total accident. And I'm very sorry I broke your fishing pole. It is my fault. I know it's totally my fault. But I'm sorry. There's nothing we can do about it right now. But I promise you, we'll get you another fishing pole. Okay? I know you were excited about that one. And I'm very sorry. But it broke. But we can still try to catch some fish today. I know. Do you want to? Yeah, but... We only have one now. We only have one fishing pole right now? <laughs> yeah, you just gave me losing my lures. Well, I didn't mean to lose your lure. Your line broke and the pole broke. I'm so sorry, okay? Maybe we can catch some fish and make this better, all right? <laughs> so Houston was all down and depressed, and I thought, how am I going to get him to come out of this, this uh, depression of me breaking his favorite new fishing pole? So I thought, well, he's excited about this little frog lure he got, so we might as well just throw that out there and see what we can catch with it. But he was over there still kind of upset on the four-wheeler. Well, look at this. Oh. This might be Houston's new favorite lure now. Yeah. Are you going to have a new favorite lure? Yeah. All right, hold it up. But I'm still mad a little for my fishing pole. Look at there, Houston. We're gonna have a catch and cook, baby. Oh, we are? Do you think we need to keep that bass right yeah. there? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. That's one of our good bass from our good bass pond. We want to eat them. We want to <laughs> eat some. You might have a lot of meat, don't you think? Well, he sure liked that frog of yours. I think you need to stay over here and try to catch one on your new frog. Come over here by myself. No, with me. Like, stay over here while I'm over here catching your fish. All right, so here's the thing. I never, ever keep our beautiful bass out of our bass pond. You have to. But Houston's been pretty upset. He's mad because we weren't catching any bluegill. He's mad because I broke his fishing pole. And he says we need to do a catch and cook. Is that right? All right, I guess we can keep one, maybe two, for a catch and cook, all right? Okay. Well, Houston, the bluegill fishing didn't turn out real great at the pond. But yeah, we got, it did. We got one big bass, don't we? Yeah. And you want to take that one back home and cook it. But first, we got to go back to the creek and check our, our oh, yeah. uh, battle box fish trap. Yeah. You think we got any bluegill in that? Yeah. Hey, if there's a big bluegill in that battle box fish trap, then we'll probably uh, cook some of them too. What do you think? Be anything in there? Mm, got a few. Got a few? Yeah. Ah, we caught a few. Nothing big though, did we? No. No big ones in there? No. We could still eat a few little ones. Well, Houston, we didn't catch near as many as we caught last time. But no. I don't think our goal was to try to catch a few that were big enough to eat. Uh, well, it turns out that. Um, this. But we caught a few. They're just, you know, they're all a little on the small side. And since we got that big old black bass out of the pond, I think we're just going to take it home and figure out a way to cook him up. What do you think? Yeah. So let's just let these these sunfish go back in the creek, all right? Okay. Good. It's not a great, it's a great way to get thin, but I do it like that. So Houston and I made it back to the house and we're gonna skin up his uh, little black bass and do a little catch and cook with the black Wait, bass it, instead of bluegill. Yeah, that's a black bass. I thought it was just a regular bass. Well, like, it's what? just a regular bass. But we could do this just a normal way, go in and fillet the fish and fry them up on the stove. But I figured since Battle Box back here, that Battle Box company was, was kind enough to send us all this stuff. And I watched that video, you guys saw the video I posted, right? Where, our, where Battle Box kind of challenges men to get out and and teach their sons the the the, the uh, skills and the knowledge and 
and stuff to survive on their own. The best thing about BattleBox is the time I get to spend with my son, teaching him how to start a fire, watching him read a topographical map, and training him to properly suture a wound. That time is invaluable. Every battle box creates a unique learning experience for both of us. We're obviously not in a survival situation. Hang on, hang on. But I figure it's, this is a good opportunity to teach Houston how to start a fire without using a lighter or matches. So we're gonna be using the little mini Inferno uh, tinder patches. They're a pretty cool little deal and a striker. Houston's never started a fire like this. So, uh -huh. well, I helped you one day in the yard, but we're gonna try to teach Houston how to use the fire striker and the little tinder patches. So here's how these work. I've got half of one here. We played with them in the yard the other day and got one lit up. But these things are very flammable. They're kind of like cotton, so you kind of just open it up a little bit and it's wax coated. I don't know what all else is on there, but they accept a spark really, really well. So we're just gonna lay that right there and see if Houston can throw some sparks on that. So our little fire striker, you just, Houston, you just slide it down that and when you hold it down here close, you throw a spark on your where you're wanting to start your fire. Okay, buddy? Okay. Don't hold it so close just yet. Just, just practice throwing a spark, okay? Almost got it. Oh, you threw a spark that time. <clears throat> practice again. You need to practice on this because it's pretty hard because you see this? Let me help you. We're gonna hold it down here. Just gonna push it away from us. Throw it. Make it throw sparks. There you go. Hang on, back up. Whoop, there you go. Now, next thing you do is you start piling little small sticks. We're gonna use a little bit of tree bark because it rained here just the other day, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of, things are kind of wet. That's not enough, I don't think. Daddy. Right there work like a champ. So while Houston takes care of our fire back there and gets it all good and hot, I'm gonna fillet this fish out real quick. We're just gonna fillet both sides, nothing fancy, but we're gonna cook him, probably lay a piece of tin foil on our little grate over there and cook him over our little fire. It's gonna be good. Does it? Yeah. All right, Houston, we got our two bass fillets. We're gonna season them up with a little bit of this Old Bay blackened seasoning and just throw them straight over the coals. Season her up really good, dude. You know what? What? Since we're not like really in a survival situation, you know what I forgot? What? I forgot to put some butter on there. I'm gonna have to go grab some butter real quick so our fish doesn't stick to our tinfoil. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be much better. We don't want them to stick. So we're gonna put some butter under those things. Butter makes everything better. Uh-oh. Now we're in trouble. Houston, huh? are you supposed to be back here playing with your knife? They were. They were, Sissy was? Yeah. Now look what you did. Did you cut your finger? Yeah. Did you cut this finger? Yeah. You did? Well, you're just having an all around bad day, buddy. I guess I'm just failing in the parenting department today. First, I broke Houston's fishing pole. Now, I wasn't paying attention close enough. Somebody was playing with his new pocket knife and cut his finger. That's because of the girls. <laughs> Emily was out here a while ago and had his pocket knife out and uh, he saw it laying there, I guess, while I was cooking and now he's playing with his knife. Show me your finger, buddy. Hold it up here to the camera. Oh my goodness. Well, let's go get a Band-Aid, all right?
Well, I guess you wouldn't be a country boy if you didn't get your first pocket knife. Well, I guess it's not technically your first, but one of your first pocket knives and get out here and cut your finger. I mean, I know a lot of people are gonna be like, oh my God, you weren't watching that boy. Well, I bet I cut my finger 10 times with different pocket knives. I'd have been a little older than this guy, but how's your finger doing? Is it better now? No. Does it still hurt? Mm-hmm. Probably shouldn't be playing with your pocket knife, should you? I think it's about time to eat some fish. Are you hungry? You think it's gonna be good? Yeah. This one might fall apart on me, Houston. It kind of stuck a little bit. All our butter ran downhill on us. So before we bite into this wonderful, juicy, awesome, largemouth black bass, I know there's a lot of guys out there that really oppose eating a black bass. And I understand why, they're a wonderful game fish but they are also wonderfully delicious. Bella, you better get your nose back, little girl. So Houston, let's have a taste test and see how it is, all right? Get a big old bite. Okay, it's way too hot. Way too hot, we'll blow it. Is it good? Yeah, it tastes like shrimp. Tastes like shrimp, I don't know about that. <laughs> Did y'all see that? Sad little bloody finger of a thumbs up he gave. So, black bass, largemouth bass, whatever you want to call it, they're an amazing fish. They taste awesome. Mmm. Probably. Man, that's good. A largemouth bass is probably one of the best tasting freshwater fish out there. I love it. I know a lot of you bass fishermen don't like seeing somebody kill a black bass, largemouth bass, but they are delicious. So the smell of fresh fish cooking just brings in the people like flies yeah. to sugar. Emily loves fish. She loves like a, a, not a battered and fried, but like a pan fried fish. So this is right up her alley. We're gonna let her, are you gonna get over here and taste it too? Yeah, sure. All right, well hold the plate. Hold the plate, hang on girls. One, two. Mm, that's good. Is it worth eating? Mm -hmm. You like it? Mm -hmm. Not bad for cooked out here over a bunch of sticks, huh? Well, guys, thanks for watching. I'm going to let the girls enjoy that fish back there. Um, not exactly how our day turned out, or our day didn't turn out exactly like we were hoping. I mean, it turned out good. Houston only got one broken fishing pole and one bloody finger. <laughs> but... You know, we got, we got the kids outside, let Houston learn how to do some stuff on the survival side of things with the, the battle box gear. I really appreciate them sending that to us. It's a lot of fun to get out here and teach the kids some new skills, huh, Houston? Yeah. It wasn't hard at all, was it? All right, well, you want to end this video for us? So guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy it, and we'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.